So, if I manage to release this video on time, it's New Year's Eve right now. We've got another year behind us. The world hasn't been the best place this year, but at least some transit progress was made. In this video, we'll take a look at public transport progress that happened in 2023, be it opening of new lines or approval of new projects and more. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. At the start of this year, the UK saw a massive strike action, which included national railways and numerous city transit services, such as the underground and buses, due to worsening working conditions and proposed pay cuts for these workers. As a response, the Conservative government, led by Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, passed new legislation curtailing the power of unions and strikes. Also in the UK, bus fares were capped at £2 starting in January. Next, in January, it became possible to buy tickets via contactless payment cards in Prague city buses. This followed the addition of contactless car ticket machines in trams. On the edge of the European continent, in Turkey, the M8 metro line opened. The line is fully automated and features 13 stations over 14.27 kilometers or 8.87 miles of track. February was the month of strikes, it seems. Public transport workers in the UK, Netherlands and Italy all went on strike this month. These strikes had lots of things in common, most prominently, the demand for higher wages to combat their increasing cost of living and inflation. In the Middle East, in the city of Shiraz, Iran, a metro line opened on the 8th of February. It currently features four stations over 15 kilometers or 9.3 miles of track. On the 10th of March, the Luton Direct Air Rail Transit, or DART, opened to the public. The DART is an automated people mover system connecting the airport to Luton Airport Parkway Railway Station, from which passengers can connect the trains to London St. Pancras. Coincidentally, on the same day across the pond, new rolling stock was introduced to the A-line of the New York City subway. On the 17th of March, a metro line in the city of Dalian, China, opened. The line features 18 stations over 24.48 kilometers, or 15.2 miles of track. March overall saw lots of subway line extensions, in cities like Malaga, Tehran and Fukuoka. Prague Public Transport was voted the second best public transport system in the world by Time Out magazine, only losing to Berlin by 1% of the vote. Moving eastward to Asia, direct train service started between Kunming, China and Vientian, Lao. The biggest transit news of April happened in Turkey, with the opening of the Ankara Sivas high speed rail line. This new train line cut the travel time between these cities to 2.5 hours. The trains operate at 250 km or 155 miles per hour. Coincidentally, this is exactly the minimum speed required to be classified as a high speed service under international standards. In May, the metro system of Quito, Ecuador opened for limited operations with passengers. The line includes 15 stations along a 22.5 km or 14 mile long track. After some issues, it was closed down again. Coming back to Europe, the Malta bus system achieved a record-breaking 5.8 million passengers in May. The metro system of Tehran also saw an extension in May, with Line 4 being extended. On the 28th of May, a tram line extension from Sídliště Modrany to Libuš opened in Prague, Czech Republic. Another month, another strike. This time, transit workers went on strike in Toulouse, France, for better pay. On the 7th of June, trams in Edinburgh, Scotland, were extended from Andrew Square to New Haven. On the 16th of June, the regional connector, a light rail tunnel in Los Angeles, California, opened. At the same time, the A and E light rail lines were extended. At the end of June, the Honolulu Skyline opened. The Skyline is an automated light rail system opened in Hawaii and a big project for Honolulu. 19 stations are planned along a 30.4 km or 18.9 mile long track. As of December 2023, only 9 stations and 17.4 km or 10.8 miles of track are in service. Moving across the Pacific Ocean, a Translor rubber tire tram system was shut down in Shanghai, China. 
I honestly don't understand rubber tire tram systems. They're essentially narrower, longer buses, in my opinion. Also in China, another metro line opened in June. This time, it was line 11 of the Suzhou metro, between these two stations which I'm not even gonna try to pronounce. The line features 28 stations, over 41.27 kilometers, or 25.64 miles of track. This line connects to the Shanghai metro, forming a conurbation in the east of China. Probably the biggest public transport news in July was the opening of the REM, or Réseau Express Metropolitain. In Montreal, Canada, as of December 2023, the REM has five stations, going from downtown Montreal to the suburb of Brossard. Extensions to more suburbs of the city and to the city's airport are under construction and plan to open in 2024 and 2027. Asian cities made big progress in July. China traditionally expanded its infrastructure, extending metro lines in Hefei and Shaoxing, opening over 11 kilometers or 6.8 miles of new lines. Moving to Europe, the tram network of Tampere, Finland, was extended by 2 kilometers or 1.24 miles of track and 3 stations. Moving eastward, the commuter rail system of Moscow, Russia, opened a new line called the D3. The line features 38 stations over 85 kilometers or 52.81 miles of track. And of course, China built even more metros, this time opening lines in Fuzhou and Wenzhou, and extending an existing line in Fuzhou, opening over 30 kilometers or 18.64 miles of new track. Russian public transport grew considerably in September. The Solnsevskaya metro line was extended to Vnukovo airport and the Lyublinsko-Dmitrovskaya line was extended to Fistiech. The commuter rail system of Moscow grew as well, with the opening of line D4. Over 90 kilometers or 56 miles of track was opened in September. In the UK, the West Midlands metro was extended to Wolverhampton. Flying across the Atlantic, the famous Bright Line train in Florida was extended from West Palm Beach to Orlando International Airport. Also in the US, the T-Line of the Seattle Link system was extended to St. Joseph. And naturally, China extended five of its metro lines in September, namely the systems of Xi'an, Harbin, Shenyang and two lines in Zhengzhou. In October, the northern section of HS2, the UK's planned high-speed rail line, was cancelled. The remaining section of HS2, running from London Euston to Birmingham, is still politically contentious, so the project is still full of uncertainty. If we travel to Asia and actually finish the high-speed rail line opened in October between the Indonesian cities of Jakarta and Bandung, the line is designed with a cruising speed of 350 km or 220 miles per hour. The train running on the line, the Chinese KCIC 400 AF, can go up to 420 km or 260 miles per hour. Moving back to Europe, the tram network of Prague, Czech Republic was extended from Holně to Slivenec and from Divoká Šárka to Dědina. Traveling to France, the B line of the Lyon metro was extended to Saint Genis Laval, Hôpital Lyon Sud, adding two new stations to the line. In Edmonton, Canada, the Valley Line of the Edmonton Light Rail Transit opened in November. This new line added 13.1 kilometers or 8.1 miles of new track with 12 stations to the system. Traveling south, the metro system of Santiago, Chile was extended in November. The extension added 5 kilometers or 3.1 miles of new track and 4 new stations. And of course, China built even more metros in November extending the systems of Chongqing and Chengdu. The aforementioned metro line of Quito, Ecuador reopened in December. Let's hope that it won't face issues again. Staying in South America, line 2 of the metro system of Lima, Peru opened. The line is fully automated and features 5 stations, although it plans to be extended. Across the Pacific, in Macau, the Taipa line of Macau's rapid transit system was extended. Back in Europe, the Transilien commuter rail network opened a new line from Paris Messi Palazzo to Versailles. Hey guys, first of all, you're all real legends for watching to the end. I've just wanted to thank you for all the support in 2023. It has been a good first year for my channel and hopefully 2024 is gonna be an even better and bigger year. 
enjoy the bloopers and here's to a successful 2024. In this video, we'll take a look at pa <sighs> Next, in January, it became... <sighs> The Dart is an automated people mover system connecting the airport to Luton. Uh, the biggest transit news of April. Hey, uh, on the 16th of June, the regional connector arrived. The line features. Uh, and naturally, China extended five of its metro. Uh, 